your end game is legendary. It baffles experts. So uh, can, can you linger on that then? Try to explain what the heck is going on there. Like if you look at game six of the previous world championship, uh, the longest game ever played in chess. It was, uh, I think, uh, his queen versus your rook, knight, and two pawns. Yeah. There's so many options there. It's such an interesting little little dance, and it's kind of not obvious that it wouldn't be a draw. So how do you escape the it not being a draw and you win that match? No, I knew um, that for most of the time it was a theoretical draw. Since um, chess with seven or less pieces on the board is solved. Mm -hmm. So you can, like people who are watching online, they can just check it. They can yeah. check and they can check a so-called table base and they it just going to spit out win for white, win for black or a draw. So, and, and also I, I knew that. Uh, I knew that, didn't know that position specifically, but I knew that it had to be a draw. So for me, it was about staying alert first of all trying to look for the best way to put my pieces uh but but yeah those end games are a bit they are a bit unusual they don't happen too often so what i'm usually good at is i'm using my my strengths that i also use in in middle games is that i um evaluate well and i calculate short variations quite um, even for the end game short variations matter yes it does matter in some simpler end games yeah but also like there are these theoretical end games with very few pieces like rook knights uh and two pawns versus queens but a lot of end games are simply defined by the queens being exchanged mm -hmm. and there are a lot of other pieces left and then it's usually not brute force it's usually more of um, understanding and evaluation and that, then I can use my my strengths um, very well. Why are you so damn good at the end game? Isn't there a lot of moves from when the end game starts to when the end game finishes and you have a few pieces and you have to figure out, it's like a sequence of little games that happens, right? Like little pattern, like how, how does it being able to evaluate a single position lead you to evaluate a long sequence of positions that eventually lead to a checkmate? Well, I think if you evaluate well at the start, you know what plans to go for. And then usually the play from there is is often pretty simple. Let's say you understand how to arrange your pieces and often also how to arrange your pawns early in the end game, then that makes all all the um, all the difference and after that is like what we call technique of very often uh that it's technique basically just mean means that um the moves are simple and uh these are moves that you know a lot of players could could make not only not only the very strongest ones these are moves that are kind of understood and, and known so yeah, with the evaluation you just constantly improving a little bit and that just leads to suffocating the position and then eventually to the win as long as you're doing the evaluation well one step at a time to some extent also yeah as i said like if you evaluate it better and thus accumulated some some small advantages then you can you can often make your 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 life pretty easy uh, towards the end of the end game so you said in uh 2019 sort of the second phase of why you're so damn good. You uh, you did a lot of opening preparation. What's the goal for you of uh, the opening game of chess? Is it to throw the opponent off from any prepared lines? Is there something you could put into words about why you're so damn good at the openings? Again, these things have changed a lot over time. Uh, back in Kasparov's days, for instance, um, he very often got huge advantages from the opening as as white can you explain why there were several reasons for for that first of all he he worked harder he was more creative and finding ideas he was able to look places others didn't uh, also he had a very strong team of people who had specific strengths in in openings that he could use so they would come up with ideas and he would 
he would integrate those ideas into like, yeah and he would also very often come up with them them himself also uh, at the start he had um some of the first computer engines uh, to uh, to work um for him to to find his ideas to look deeper to verify the, his ideas he was better at using them than a lot of others now i feel like the playing field is a lot more level there are both computer engines neural networks and hybrid engines available to practically anybody so it's it's much harder to find ideas now that um that actually like give you an advantage with the the the, the white pieces i mean people don't expect to find those ideas anymore now it's all about finding ideas that are missed by the uh, engines either they're missed entirely or they're missed at low depth uh, and using them to you know gain some advantage in the sense that you have more more knowledge and uh, you know it's also good to know that usually you, these are not complete bluffs these are like semi bluffs so that <laughs> you know that even if your opponent makes all the right moves you can still make a draw and also at the start of 2019 neural networks had just started to be a thing in 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 chess and uh, i'm not entirely sure but there, there were at least some players in even in the top events you, who you could see did not use them or did not use them in the right way and then you could gain a huge advantage because a lot of positions they were being evaluated differently by the neural networks than traditional chess engines because they simply think about uh, chess in a very very um, different way so short answer is these days it's all about surprising your your opponent and taking it into position where you have more more knowledge so is there some sense in which it's okay to make suboptimal quote unquote moves no just- but you have to i mean you you have to because the best moves have been analyzed to to death mostly so that's a kind of when you say semi bluff that's a kind of sacrifice you're you're sacrificing the optimal move the optimal position so that you can take the opponent. I mean, that's a game theoretic sense. Yeah. You take the opponent to something they didn't prepare well. Yeah, uh, but you could also look at it another way that regardless, like if you turn on whatever engine you turn on, like if you try to analyze either from the starting position or the starting position of some popular opening, like if you um, analyze long enough, it's always going to end up in a draw. So in in that sense, you may not be going for like the objective, the tries that are objectively the most difficult to draw against, but you know you are trying to look at least at at the less obvious um, paths. Um, How much do you use engines? Do you use Leela, Stockfish uh, in your preparations? My team does. Mm-hmm. Personally, I try not to use them too much on on my own uh because i know that when i play you can obviously cannot have help from from engines and often i feel like often having imperfect or knowledge about a position uh or some engine knowledge can be a lot worse than than having no knowledge uh so i try to look at engines as little as possible so the, yeah, so the, your team uses them for research, for generation of ideas. Yeah, but you are uh, relying primarily on your human resources. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you can evaluate well. You don't lean. Yeah, no, I can evaluate as a human. I can know what yeah. they find unpleasant and 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 so on. And the, it's very often the case for me to some extent, but a lot for for others that you arrive in a position. And your opponent plays a move that you didn't expect. And, you know, if you didn't expect it, you know that it's probably not a great move Mm -hmm. (laughs) since it hasn't been expected by by the engine. But if it's not, if it's not obvious why it's not a good move, it's usually very, very hard to figure it out. And so then looking at the engines doesn't necessarily help because at that point, like you're facing a human, you have to, to sort of, think as a human.